Hey, did you know there was another Lantern Corps back in 1982? Before the Emotional Spectrum, before the Sinestro Corps, there was the Anti-Green Lantern Corps. And today we're going to talk about their one and only appearance. Green Lantern number 150 is written by Marv Wolfman with pencils by Joe Staten and Mike DiCarlo, letters by Ben Oda, and colors by Tony Tallin. The title of this issue is From Quard With Hate. Hal Jordan is dragged unconscious through a portal into the antimatter universe of Quard by Stinley, a warrior who was genetically enhanced by the Quardians for the specific purpose of capturing Green Lanterns. The Quardians have been spying on the planet Oa and discovered that the Guardians had a falling out with Hal Jordan. Hal ignored a distress call from the planet Ongara, Abin Sur's homeworld, to stay on Earth and help Carol with business at Ferris Aircraft. When the Guardians reprimanded him for it, Hal decided that enough was enough and he was going to quit the Corps. This is exactly the opportunity the Quardians were waiting for, because Hal Jordan is the last piece they need to finally perfect their latest weapon. The Weaponers of Quard are attempting to build their own Lantern Corps, wielding rings powered by an antimatter battery. And because antimatter destroys any positive matter it comes into contact with, that makes every blast from these rings a one-hit kill. The flaw in their design is that the only way to make any of this work was by boosting the brain capacity of their soldiers, so that they can produce enough willpower to operate the rings. But under these conditions, a modified soldier can only live for 24 hours before burning out. That's why the Quardians desperately need to study Hal's Green Lantern Ring, so they can figure out how to improve their own rings. And they need to do it fast. According to what they learned by spying on the Guardians, Hal's ring will run out of power in a few hours, at which point it'll teleport back to Oa. So the only way for the Guardians to get what they want is to convince Hal to cooperate with them. And since they know Hal quit the Corps, they figured that maybe he'd be willing to help them out, especially if they promised to spare the Earth. Meanwhile, on the planet Oa, Aresia is petitioning the Guardians to send a team to rescue Hal, their response is basically, hey, that guy quit, he's not our problem. So Aresia decides that she'll just have to go save Hal herself. She dives through a portal and is immediately fighting a squad of Thunderers. Meanwhile, Hal escapes his prison cell by using his ring to heat up the atoms in the air, building up tremendous pressure until the whole room just explodes. Now that he's free, Hal goes off to find the central battery powering the antimatter lanterns, but is immediately ambushed by the entire anti-Green Lantern Corps. He can't afford to take even a single hit from them, and their power can neutralize his, so there's only one course of action left. Get the hell out of there and send a message to the Guardians. If an army with antimatter weapons and a complete disregard for their own safety since they only have 24 hours to live launched an all-out surprise attack on Oa, there's nothing the Green Lantern Corps could do to stop them. Aresia catches up with Hal just in time to save him from a few thousand antimatter blasts, and the two of them race towards the portal back to the positive matter universe. Along the way, Hal reveals that he was only pretending to quit the Corps because the Guardians knew that the Guardians were spying on them. The Guardians were aware that the Quardians were building some sort of new weapon and concocted this whole ruse so that Hal could go to Quard and investigate. But none of that's going to matter unless Hal and Aresia can make it home in time to sound the alarm. Unfortunately for them, Stinley is standing in their way. He's been genetically enhanced again. <laughs> Not only does he seem to be virtually immune to Green Lantern energy, anyone he touches will instantly become evil and loyal to the Quardians. He grabs Hal, and this time it's not an act. Hal is now evil and is trying to kill Aresia, who's putting everything she has into defending against his attacks. She tries to run for the portal to get a message to the Guardians, but the anti-Green Lantern Corps blocks her. Aresia is surrounded, cut off from the portal, and is preparing herself to go down fighting when she's suddenly saved by the arrival of the Green Lantern Corps. The Guardians gathered the Corps and sent them after Aresia once she entered the Antimatter universe. All of the Lanterns fire at Stinley at the same time, and he just sort of vanishes? Aresia asks Arcus what happened, and he just sort of tells her, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> Which really is the character's way of saying that this story has to be wrapped up by the end of the issue and we're almost out of pages. Then they do something really cool. 
Hal's willpower wasn't enough to resist whatever Stinley did to turn him evil, so 100 Green Lanterns combined their willpower to overwhelm the Quardian influence and free Hal's mind. Now it's all come down to a huge battle between the two core. The Green Lantern Corps still hasn't recovered from a recent battle against Krona, meaning that there are only about 100 Green Lanterns fighting over 2,000 Antimatter Lanterns. In the middle of all the chaos, Hal, Aresia, and Kat Matui break off from the battle to go destroy the Antimatter Central Battery, and they succeed just in time. All of the Antimatter Rings went offline and their users instantly died. According to Arcus, only three Green Lanterns died in the battle, which Hal rightfully thinks is still too many. With the day saved, and Hal no longer undercover, the Green Lantern Corps returns to Oa so things can get back to normal. That is, <laughs> until the Guardians remind Hal that even though his dereliction of duty was a good excuse to send him undercover, he did still actually refuse to go help the planet Ungara when they were in trouble. So the Guardians decide that the punishment should fit the crime. If Hal cares more about his personal life on Earth than his duties to the rest of his sector, then he won't be allowed to return to Earth anymore, until the Guardians are satisfied that he's paid his debt. Hal asks them for a month to get his affairs in order. The Guardians give him one day. So Hal silently charges his ring at the central battery, knowing that once the charge runs out, he'll be saying goodbye to his home and his loved ones for what may be a very long time. And that was the rise and fall of the Anti-Green Lantern Corps, an interesting concept with a not-so-great name. Anti-Lanterns or Anti-Matter Lanterns sounds a lot better, but they were never meant to stick around, so I guess it doesn't matter that much. Still, though, it's a nice idea for an anniversary issue, and honestly, this is just more proof that the Quardians and their weaponers should be a much bigger deal as villains for the Green Lantern Corps, if not the entire DC Universe. I would love to see this concept revisited. It would be very easy to say that one of the anti-Green Lanterns actually did survive, and then just go from there, revitalizing this whole concept into something that can be explored long term. Their brains had to be altered to make their rings work. What does that do to a person and their sense of identity? And what the hell happened to Stinley? <laughs> this character never appears again. He seems to be immune to ring energy, so what did the core even do to him? Did they open up a portal or something? Was he teleported away? So many unanswered questions, but that just means there's a lot of potential for more stories in the future. So what do you think of the Anti-Green Lantern Corps? What would you like to see done with them if they came back today? Tell me all about it in the comments down below, and consider subscribing if you want to see more videos like this one, exploring the weird history of Green Lantern. Until next time, thank you for taking the time to watch. My name is Dan, we'll talk again soon.